Hey, this is Brad Callen, and I'm so excited to show you a demo of our new software called Toonly, which makes it super simple for you to create professional animated explainer videos in just a few short minutes. But before I do that, let me quickly share with you why online business owners and video creators alike absolutely love using explainer videos. For one thing, these videos remind us of our times as a child spent watching Saturday morning cartoons. So there's a sense of nostalgia that comes with cartoon explainers, which not only gives us those warm fuzzies, but it also creates an emotional connection, which is key to getting and keeping attention. Something that's only going to get more and more difficult on the internet. Plus, there's tons of stuff you can do with animated explainer videos that you just can't do with other types of videos. Things like making characters run, jump, and fly. You can show planes soaring and make balls bounce. All that motion makes for videos that are super entertaining and much more engaging. And not only that, but with just a few clicks of your mouse, you can bring your characters to life, having them say anything you'd like, just like this. Using talking cartoon characters is perfect for promoting a product or service, teaching a subject or concept, sending a personalized message, or even singing a song. The only limit is your imagination. And these types of videos are crazy effective. That's why all the big brands choose them for their marketing. Brands like Walmart, Amazon, Google, Facebook, and even YouTube, just to name a few. You can bet that if internet giants like Google, Facebook, and YouTube have used animated explainer videos, it's because these types of videos work amazingly well, which can mean more views, likes, shares, and customers. Animated explainer videos can also be used to sell, explain, or promote virtually anything. They're great for explaining products, telling brand stories, Facebook advertising, social media content, and so much more. The bad news is that video designers typically charge between $5,000 and $35,000 for just one minute of video, putting them out of reach for most businesses. And it shouldn't be like that. Not only is Toonly super affordable, but it's really simple to use, even if you have absolutely zero technical or design skills. Let me quickly show you how it works. Once you open up Toonly on a Mac or a PC, you'll click on the button to create a new video. That takes you to the Toonly dashboard Dashboard. And as you'll see along the left, there are done for you scenes you can drag and drop onto the canvas, different backgrounds you can choose from, tons of characters of various ethnicities, hundreds of cool props, your choice of fonts, and plenty of royalty free audio tracks to set the mood for your video. Also, you can upload images, fonts, and audios. And you can even select from lots of different animations for your props and characters for the ultimate and customization. So let's go ahead and create a short video now. First, we'll pick the background we want, then we'll add a character. Select what we want him to do. I'm going to choose waving. Add a house, a tree, and a fence as our props. Resize them. Add some text. Finally, a fancy scene transition, and voila! In just a few short seconds, we have Jim introducing himself and telling viewers to contact his company to find the house of their dreams. And then we'll smoothly transition to scene number two. When you're finished, you can export your video in a variety of sizes, formats, and quality right to your computer. Truly anyone can create a video with Toonly, regardless of your skills or your experience. It's that easy. But should you have questions, we have a super responsive support team, lots of free tutorials, and a growing Facebook group full of Toonies who are ready and waiting to assist you. So if you're ready to create beautiful, engaging, professional, animated explainer videos, go ahead and click the button beside this video to grab your copy of Toonly right now. Plus, you have absolutely nothing to lose by trying Toonly because it comes with a full 30-day, 100% money-back guarantee. If you don't love it, just email support at Toonly.com and we'll refund every penny. So go ahead and click the button beside this video to get started today. And I can't wait to see all the great videos you create with Toonly. In this tutorial, we're going to go on a quick tour of the Toonly interface. What you're looking at right now is the preview window. So I'm going to go ahead and close that, and we'll take a look at the main work area. It's broken down into several sections. Along the top, you have a link to your My Videos section, and buttons for Save, Export, Undo and Redo, your title, which you can edit, by the way, simply by clicking and typing, your preview button, your zoom in and out tools, and your account tool. Over to the left, this panel contains everything that will be going into your main video area. So you've got your preset scenes, backgrounds, characters, objects, text, and audios. On the right, you have a panel that is collapsible in case you want more workspace for your video. 
you'll notice that the scenes are stacked vertically and they're, they're labeled um, scene one, two, and three. In between each scene is your transition bar. So you can change how you have each scene move from one to another. Like the title, you can edit your scene names. So let's do that. You simply just click in and edit. You'll notice the icons. This one will duplicate your scene and the trash can will delete it. Confirm to delete. You can also delete your scenes down here by clicking an X on each of the tabs. So whichever one you want to delete, click the X and then confirm to delete. Finally, you can add new scenes right from the panel here by clicking add new scene here or here. Or if you go down to the timeline, click right here, add new scene. You can move your scenes by clicking on the dots and dragging them into position. You'll notice as I do that, the order down here changes as well. Likewise, you can reorder them by dragging the tabs. And let's delete scene four. Now, if you go down into the timeline area, you'll notice a few sections. You have your playback controls, then you have rows for your scenes, your music, and voiceover. The timeline itself is measured in one second increments. So in this case, I have a four second scene. My classroom scene is about eight seconds. My closing scene is about six and a half seconds. You can extend the duration of your scenes by dragging different elements to make them longer, or you can shorten them by dragging them the other way and reducing how long they appear. The scene row is stacked of several rows with each row representing the different assets of the scene. So for example, these two green bars represent our characters. The periwinkle bar is our Toonly logo, and then the brown bar is our school background. These are all labeled so you can quickly see which elements they represent. You can also zoom in and out on your timeline. Depending on the length of it, you may want to adjust the view. And you can also collapse the view of your scene in the timeline. If you have a lot of elements, it can get very busy looking down there. And this just simplifies the look a little, makes it a little easier to work with. You can see your, your music and voiceover a little bit better if you collapse this scene. And that's pretty much it for the Toonly Interface Tour. Thanks for watching. In this tutorial, we'll go over working with characters. As you can see, I have a short scene here of an award ceremony, and I'd like to add a character to it. So let's do that. First, let's place the playhead where we'd like the character to appear. I'm thinking at about one second in would be nice. Next, let's select a character. Do that by going to the Characters tab and selecting the character that you'd like. I'll take this lady. You just click and drag the character into the scene. As you can see, nothing really has happened yet. There's an empty outline representing her. That's because she has not yet popped into the scene. If I click Play, here she comes. By default, each character comes on and then disappears after two seconds. You can adjust that by stretching the bar that represents the character to the desired amount of time. 
I would like her to be a little bit larger in this scene, so I'm going to select her and then click on this green square and drag my mouse until she's the size I'd like. I think this will be fine and I'm just going to position her by dragging her right here onto the carpet. At this point she just pops in and then disappears soon after. What I would like to do is add another action. Rather than just having her on for two seconds and then disappearing, we'd like to have her for the entire scene and we'd like to have her do a few other things than just stand there. So if you click this plus button in the bar, you get some more options. And these are for different types of animations you can have your character do. So I've got the type, which would be if she's angry, clapping, dancing, exercising, flying in, holding a camera, holding a trophy, saying hi, doing yoga, and more. You can also control the in and out effects by selecting them. Right now she's bouncing in and out, but she could also just appear instantly, grow, or alpha, which is basically fading in or fading out. So let's have our character do something. Let's have her clap. And if you take your playhead, you can scrub back, you can see this, or you could just hit play. There she is, she appears, she's clapping, and then she bounces back out. So that's fairly short, let's do something else. Let's click the plus button, and let's have her, let's have her do a little dance. So now if we hit play, here she comes, she claps, and she dances, yay! And finally, what would be an award ceremony without an award, right? So let's have her hit that trophy. There just so happens to be an animation for that, so let's take it. And now let's see what happens. Here she comes, clapping, dancing, and getting her award. You can adjust the timing of everything by shrinking and expanding the actions as needed. I'm going to have her idle a little less and let's see, try to dance a little bit more and then we're just going to drag the whole thing over so it ends down here at the same time the scene ends. In addition to all of the stationary poses, you can also animate your character and have them move. So let's have her run out of the scene real quick. So if I go to my character, click the plus sign, and choose running. You could also choose walking if you prefer. I'm gonna choose running. She can run off the scene. I'm gonna flip her because I want her to go to the right. So I clicked this button to have her flip. Now, you'll notice when it's highlighted down here, there's two little circle icons down in the bottom. These are called keyframes. Your first keyframe is the beginning position and size. And the second one is the end position or size. So I'm just gonna move my character to where I want her to end. And I want her to go completely off the screen. So I'm going to let go over there. So now, we hit play, you'll see her run across the screen. I'm going to go to settings, and I'm going to turn off the effect of her bouncing out. So it's going to be instant. Hit play. And off she goes. So in scene two, let's have her enter here and run across and exit over there. So we're gonna start by bringing our character into the scene. Let's take a peek at her settings. We want her running and let's have her bounce, turn the bounce off so that it's instant in both cases. So she's gonna come in instantly and out instantly. 
save. And then we want to flip her direction so she's going the appropriate way. And then finally, we want to come down here, give it a little bit of time, so we're going to stretch it. And then we're going to set our keyframes. So she can come in here, that's fine. We want our end keyframe here to be way over here. So let's do that. Let's take a peek. And there she goes running across the screen. You'll notice she only takes a few steps going across, so there's one more setting we want to adjust here. So if we click on this gear icon, repeat. We want this, let's have it repeat three times so her legs keep moving as she goes across, across the screen. There, that looks better. And off she goes. So now, if we preview the entire two scenes, you'll see after she gets her award, she's gonna run off and then run across the park and then onwards to her home or wherever she's going. That's it for working with characters. Thank you for watching. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to work with objects. This includes placing objects in the scene, adjusting their size and position, animating the object, and uploading your own custom objects. So let's get started. Here we have an industrial scene with an inspector inspecting something. So let's give her something to inspect. You'll start by clicking on the Objects tab and scrolling through the list of objects until you find what you're looking for. You can also search for an object. In this case, I know I want the fragile box, so I entered fragile, and there it is in the list. Now before I place it into the scene, I'm gonna look at where my playhead is in the scene. And right now it's at seven seconds. I would like the box to appear at about one second in. So I'm placing the playhead at the one second mark, and now I'm going to drag the box into the scene. And it appears right there as expected. We would like it to last the duration of the scene, so I'm going to drag the bar representing the object all the way to the end of the scene. When you click on the object, you get a menu along the top. It's got your settings, your flip tool, bring forward, bring backwards, and delete. You'll also notice down in the timeline that the bar representing the object is highlighted and these two little keyframe markers appear. And this is really handy because this is how you're gonna animate your object. So let's say we want the box to appear here and then travel along the conveyor belt to the end. So what you're gonna do is you click on your first keyframe and that's your starting point for the object. Move it over just slightly. And then if you click on the ending keyframe, it brings the playhead to the very end of the object scene. And what you're gonna do is you can either grow or shrink the object depending on what you're depending on the effect you want, or you can move it. So now if we view the scene we should see the box move from here to here. There it is. Toonly allows you to import your own objects as well, which is really handy, especially because it'll allow you to import animated GIFs. You can also import JPEGs and PNG files. So let's start with a basic um, PNG file and then we'll import an animated GIF. To do the imports, you go to Objects, click on Upload New Object, and then search your computer for it. I have a palette on the desktop that I'm going to bring in. It preserves the file name. If you don't want the file name, you can type over it rename it. 
click Save and Upload. And there it is. Now, before I place it into my scene, I'm going to drag the playhead to my starting point. And I think I'd like it to start at the very beginning of the scene. Now I'm going to drag it into place and I'm going to stretch it so that it lasts the entire duration of the scene. So now I have this palette that's gonna appear here for seven seconds. We're gonna to want to adjust its size and position. So since it's so large, I'm gonna drag it down until I can see my upper right corner and adjust it accordingly. So I think that's fine right there. And let's see how the scene looks. Okay, and my box is moving towards the inspector. Now, this would be a great place to put a couple of gears to help the conveyor move. I just so happen to have an animated GIF of a gear, so I'm going to upload it right now using that same exact technique. So I'm going to go to Upload New Object. There it is on my desktop. Open. I think the name is fine. Save and Upload. Again, I'm going to place my playhead where I want the gear to appear, and I think the beginning is perfect. Now I'm just gonna drag it into place. I'm gonna do, do it twice, because we have two. Now I'm gonna go down here and stretch them so they last the entire scene. And then we're gonna go ahead and play the scene so that we can see the size and make our adjustments. Okay, so they're quite large, so we're going to shrink them down and then fine tune the positioning. I'll do the same on this one. Okay, that looks good. Let's play it from the beginning and see how our scene looks. There we go, and our gears are automatically animated all by themselves because we used a GIF. And finally, you can adjust some of the settings here on your objects. So let's go ahead and have the gears appear a little differently than the others. So I'm gonna select a gear and I'm gonna click settings and you have an in effect and an out effect. Let's have them grow in and shrink out. So I'm gonna save. I'm gonna do the same to this one. Row in, shrink out, and save. Go back to the beginning and hit play, and there. They grow in, and they start moving. Then at the very end, they're gonna just shrink away. Yep. That's it for working with objects. Thank you for watching. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to add transitions between your scenes. Here we have a video with 16 basic scenes in it, and we've put transitions in between each one. I'm going to show you where to do that and how to do that. Over here in the right side panel, you'll see all of your scenes listed. You'll also see the transition bar in between each scene. To add or change a transition, Simply click in the bar and select one from the list. Here's a clip with some of the transitions so that you can see how they look. There are more available in Toonly. Slide down, arrows right, collapsing circles, teal circle, Two circles, worms. That's it for transitions. Thank you for watching.
In this tutorial, you'll learn how to work with music files. So let's get started. I have a scene here and we would like to add some music to it. So we're going to click Audios. And then we're going to select a song. Let's take Broken Glass. We're going to drag it down into the music section of the timeline. Now, by default, the music will play across all of your scenes. So you'll notice I have music down here, and then on scene two, the music continues. If I, had, if I add more scenes, the music will continue across them. You control your music in scene one. So if I right click on it, I can adjust the settings, bringing the volume level down lower, or increasing it, just depending on what your needs might be. This playthrough button is what I just described, where the music crosses all of your scenes. In most cases, that's what you're going to want. In some cases, you might not want that. If you do not want that, then you remove the checkbox here, and the music will only go in that scene. Let's save that for a moment and go to scene two. You'll notice the music has disappeared. If I wanted to add a different jingle for this scene, I could do that by having that tick box unticked. So I'm going to go back to scene one. I'm going to go back to my scene settings by right clicking and I'm going to click play through once again so that the music is at its default crossing. In an upcoming release you'll have the option to fade the audio in and out. Okay that's it for now. Thank you for watching. In this tutorial, we'll go over adding a voiceover. Now you'll need a microphone. You can either use your microphone that's built into your computer, or you can plug in an external microphone. Before you record your voiceover, place your playhead at the point in time where you'd like the voiceover to begin. And then go down to the voiceover section of your timeline and click the microphone. It will turn red and start recording immediately. Here we go. Book your getaway today. And then just click the microphone once again to turn it off. Here you can see the recording. If you'd like, you can trim away this empty space at the beginning. I know that I do not want this section here because that was me telling you to click the microphone again. So to get rid of it, I'm just going to drag with my cursor. Now I can move my voiceover around. Remember I wanted it to start at the playhead, so I'm going to move it here. Book your getaway today. You can also mute your voiceover, unmute it. Likewise, if I had music here, you would do the same. And if you click on settings, you can adjust the volume levels. So if you need it louder or quieter, you can adjust it. This playthrough button is also interesting. If you wanted to record a long voiceover and have it go across all of your scenes, you can do that. And it does that by default. If you wanted each scene to have its own voiceover, you could uncheck this. And to remove your voiceover, to delete it, just click the remove button and that will delete it. Well, that's it for voiceovers. Thank you for watching. In this tutorial, we're going to go over backgrounds and preset scenes. So let's get started. I'm currently in the backgrounds tab and I'm going to select the bus stop. I'm going to drag it into the main area and you'll notice that a brown bar appears in the timeline. It is labeled bus stop and if we hit play, you'll see the bus stop animate in and out. If you right click on the bar, you'll get the background settings menu where you can adjust the entrance and exit effect by turning it on or off depending on what you'd like. 
One reason why you might want to turn off your exit and entrance effects would be if you have transitions between your scenes. And I'll show you what I'm talking about in just a moment. For example, let's add another scene with a different background. Let's find the airport and select it and place it in our screen. And I now have the bar representing the airport down here. If we click preview, you'll notice between the two scenes, it goes to black. If you don't like that, or if you add a transition between the scenes and don't like the fact that it goes black and then has the transition, you can adjust it. So let's do that. Let's go to scene one and right click and we're going to turn off the exit effect and then we're going to go to scene two right click and we're going to turn off the entrance effect so now if we hit preview it's just how we want it we don't have black in between the transition once you have your scene you can add objects and characters to it And when you adjust the object or character's duration, the background is adjusted as well. Okay, so now let's go to presets. We're gonna add a new scene. We're gonna click on the scenes tab. And these are all pre-created scenes. They have backgrounds, people, and props. So let's add one to take a look at how it works. So I've selected the circus. There's our background with a character and some props. It works just like the regular background. You can right click on the bar and change your entrance and exit effects if desired. And you can add objects and characters as needed. You can also move your characters around within the scene and customize it however you'd like. And that's it for backgrounds and scenes. Thank you for watching. In this tutorial, we're going to go over the camera tool in Toonly. Now this tool allows you to add some really nice cinematic effects to your animations, such as zooming in, zooming out, panning left or right, or tilting up and down. You can also do a mix of all of the above if you'd like. Now before we start moving this camera around, there's a few things you need to know. So first, let's take a look down at the timeline. You've got your camera bar here in red. The camera icon has a slash in it right now because it's not activated. Now, if we activate it by clicking on it, you'll notice the screen gets a little muted. It's not as bright as it was before. Let me show that to you again. See how when I turn it on and off, it changes? There's a thin overlay layer on top, which indicates the camera's framing. At this point, the camera is showing the entire scene. If you wanted to zoom in, say on the character, you would need to bring the framing down onto the character. The camera tool uses keyframes. So there's one here at the beginning of the scene, and there's another one down here at the end of the scene. These little round um, icons. You can also add keyframes on the fly anywhere within the bar just by double clicking. So I've clicked on the initial keyframe, and when I did that, you'll see this little tiny green square in the upper right. This is your resize tool. So now once that green square appears, we can start working with the framing of the camera. So I would like to start with a medium close up of the character and then we'll zoom out to a wider shot. So since I'm on the initial keyframe, I have set the framing the way I'd like it. And now I'll go over to my ending keyframe. And right now it's a wide shot and I think that's perfect. So let's do a quick preview of the camera framing first, and then after that, we'll preview the actual camera movement. We click to the beginning and click play. 
we're gonna see the framing that we just set up so it was close and now it's pulling out to a wide shot obviously the camera didn't do the actual zoom there so in order to see the actual movement we need to go into preview so he's close up and now the camera is pulling back to reveal the sand dune so that's looking great so let's do another scene and this time we'll pan the camera from left to right so I've created this little airport scene and I'd like to have the camera come over here from the airport end and pan over to the airplane itself. So I've clicked my keyframe and my little green resize tool appeared, which allows me to zoom in and position my camera. So let's make sure we've got our building here. I think that looks just lovely. And that's our first keyframe. And then we're gonna go over here to our ending keyframe resize the camera and reposition it and we'll end here on this little guy so let's take a look once again at the framing first and then we'll preview it so our camera is just going to move over just like that now if we hit preview and there it is that's our little pan in addition to zooming and panning the camera you can also move it up and down. It's the same technique as before. You can also add multiple keyframes within the camera bar by double clicking at the point where you'd like them to appear. And then you would just adjust your settings as desired. To remove a keyframe, you hit the Alt button and click. On a Mac, it's the Option button and click. There's one more setting I want to show you. Right click on your camera bar and you'll get the camera settings menu. Easing. Easing affects how your camera moves, how quickly it comes in or if it slows down, if it accelerates or decelerates. There's a whole bunch of different options that you can choose from. I recommend playing with them to see which one you like the best. We'll choose elastic and we'll have it do in and out. You can also choose for it to only affect the in movement or the out movement. It's your choice. So let's preview this real quick so we can see what it looks like. See how it just kind of bounces in and out. You can also combine your camera movements with actual character movements. For example, if you wanted to follow a character as they walk across the scene, or in the case of our airport scene, we could have this airplane taxi along the runway and follow it with the camera. I'm going to start by setting keyframes for my plane. So I'm going to click my plane keyframe. That's where I want it to start. That's fine. And I want it, I, I'm going to click my ending point. So there's my ending keyframe. I'm going to have it taxi down here. I think that's fine. Now for our camera, we're going to start with our beginning keyframe and we need to move it onto our little airplane. And then our ending keyframe, we want it to end over here where our airplane stopped. So let's take a quick look. So here's our framing. So it's just going to follow the airplane as it taxis. And if we preview, the camera follows the plane as it taxis. So that's it. Camera movements in Toon Lee. Thank you for watching. In this video, we're going to go over the underlay text box and the object rotation features that are new in Toon Lee. So let's take a look. You can now add a colored box underneath your text to help it stand out against your background. In order to do it, it's quite simple. You'll just add in your text as you normally do by dragging it into your scene and typing your text.
And then you'll notice down at the bottom, you have a new slider bar called the underlays opacity. And you just slide it. So if you want a really light underlay, you would have it down here. And then if you want it to be completely opaque, go all the way to the right. Then you can select a color. So you can make it bright pink if you'd like, or whatever color strikes your fancy. And then for padding, this just makes it larger, or just the default down here. You can even go a little bit smaller if you'd like. So just adjust it how you like, and that is it. You now have an underlay text box. The next feature is the object rotation feature. In this example, I do have some keyframes just to make it a little bit more interesting. But let's go over here to a different scene and we'll see what the possibilities are. You'll notice here I have all of the characters and they're tilting. We couldn't do that before, but now we can. And it's really quite easy. Here's how to do it. Click on characters. Find the character you'd like. Drag him onto the scene. And you'll notice he now has his original green resize tool in the upper right. And then down here at the bottom, there's a new red tool. And that's your rotate tool. So we're just gonna rotate him. Let's bring him down in size and move him into position. Now we can fine tune that position just by dragging the red square. And that's it. That's all you have to do. You can do this to characters, objects, and text. So let's add an object. It's the same exact technique. Let's put a cat in here. Let it load. There he is. And we're going to resize the cat so he's in proportion to the humans. And rotate him. And there's our cat. It's the same concept for text. Let's drag our text onto the scene. We're going to go ahead and type in some text. And let's give it a text box while we're at it. Let's make this blue. And that should be fine. So. Same as, as before, resize with the green and rotate with the red. So let's do a little keyframing for fun as well. So if we go down here to our smooth text, click on the first keyframe. That's our starting position. Maybe we'll have it a little more that way. And then click on your ending keyframe. and we're going to rotate it this way. So now when we play the scene, that will rotate. And then finally, the earth was also an object that I rotated. I brought it in and I just tilted it over a little bit. Say we don't want it to be this particular angle, maybe we want it to be this angle. All you do is rotate it as you like. There's one last trick I'd like to show you, and it has to do with the object rotation direction during a keyframe movement. So you can either make it go clockwise or counterclockwise. So let's take a look. Let's add a dolphin to our scene. Resize him a bit. Rotate him. Set our starting keyframe there and our ending keyframe will be over here and we're gonna rotate him down. And he does a nice little flip in front of the cruise ship. If I wanted a different effect, I can right click on the timeline and get this new menu that says rotation clockwise, change it to counterclockwise, and now he will just rotate in the counterclockwise position. 
You can also access that menu by clicking on him and going to settings, and it's right there. Or you can right click the object and the menu appears. So there's three ways to get to it. And then you just choose the one you like and adjust accordingly. So that's it. Everything you need to know about text underlay boxes and object rotation. Thank you for watching. In this tutorial, we're going to go over trimming character actions, a new feature in Toonly. Have you ever been frustrated with some of the character actions? For example, the lap talk action where they sit down, the desk comes in, and when they get up, the desk and the chair move away. Maybe you just want them sitting there typing quietly the whole time without all of the movement. For example, let's just take a look. I have two characters. Both of them will be sitting at the laptop and typing. The first character is the modified one, and this girl here in the background is the original. So if you go through, you'll see she'll sit down and everything comes in and she begins typing. Then as she leaves, it's the reverse. Meanwhile, our character in the foreground is just typing away. He doesn't have all the movement coming and going. So this new feature called trimming controls that. So let's just take a look at this as it plays. And I'll show you how to do that. So we start by adding a new scene. And we grab a character. We size the character accordingly. We choose our action. We'll do the same one working on a laptop. Okay, so here she is. We'll put her where I had the guy originally. Size it. Now you click on the gear icon, and you'll notice right here we've got trim beginning and trim ending. So we're going to trim the beginning, and you're just going to drag the slider where you want it to start. So in this case, I want to get rid of all this part here, okay? So I'm just going to find a good spot where everything is nice and stable and click Save. So that's my starting point. So now she's just typing. We'll address the exit here. Let's make it a little longer. Let's have her here for five seconds, okay? Go into Settings. I'm going to have her come in instantly and exit instantly, so we don't have any of that bounce either. Okay, so let's take a look at how that's going to look. So she's just typing. You'll notice she stood up. Remember, we didn't want that. So now we're going to go ahead and click on her or click on the bar in the timeline. And now we're going to choose Trim Ending. We're going to do the same thing. We don't want this part. So we're just going to end it right about there. And click Save. So now if we watch it, she should just be sitting there typing the entire time. And that's it. Now I do want to note a few things about this. So let's go back, let's go to another scene I created. Here I have two identical characters with two identical movements, with the exception of one being default and one being trimmed. Okay, so she's, the one on the left is your default, you'll notice her hand moves up and she searches. Whereas the one on the right just starts already searching, okay? so. Her hand is already up, so I trimmed out this movement here. So they're going to do their thing. Now there's a new movement. They're going to dance. You'll notice they're identical here. They both move their hands down and they begin dancing. Now I cannot control that because the animation between the two has to match. 
So for example, if I had ended with her here and then transitioned to the dance move, it wouldn't be smooth. So I cannot control, I can't trim that part. We need to have the movements match. But I can certainly trim the ending. So see how she's got her hands up and then the default one goes down as normal, but the modified one stays up. So in between here, you do not get the options to trim. And we can look at that on the menu here. Notice how I can trim the beginning, but there's no trim ending button here. Likewise, on this one, I can trim the ending, but there's no trim beginning here because we need to have that transition between the two actions. You'll also notice that some character actions, you don't get the trim at all. So for example, if we look at our superheroes, when they're idle here, there's no trim at all because there's no need to. You're, what would you be trimming? They're just standing there. There's nothing to trim. Okay, so sometimes you won't see the trim option and that's because it's not available on that particular action. And that's it. Trimming character actions in Tunley. Thanks for watching. In this tutorial, we're going to go over a new feature in Toonly called Bulk Operations. Bulk Operations allows you to adjust the properties of multiple items at once rather than individually. So let's take a look. We'll start with titles. You'll see I have two individual titles here. And if I'd like to work with them together, I need to first select them together. And you'll do that by using control click on a Windows computer or command click on a Mac computer. You can also use your mouse and drag over the items that you'd like to select. So now that I have them selected, I can now use the settings here to control them. For example, if I want to remove them, I can do so or flip them or bring them forward or backwards. You can also use the settings here to make them larger or smaller, or rotate them. As well as the settings over here in the common text settings panel. For example, let's change our font. And we can change the font size if we'd like and the opacity if we'd like. Let's put an underlay underneath. Give it a little bit of padding. And let's change the opacity color. So there we have it. We've now made changes to both items at one time. You can do the same with characters and objects. So let's take a look. You'll see I've got a couple characters and a few objects in the scene now. You'll also see that this dolly and bucket are way too big. So we can resize them collectively by selecting them. Use control click, command click, or use your mouse to select them. And then make your adjustments. So that looks a little bit better. And then we'll just move them down. We can also rotate them should we want to and make other changes. Same with our characters. So let's command click to adjust them. We can resize them, we can move them, rotate them, and so forth. There's one more thing I wanted to show you and that's down here in the timeline itself. If you 
control or command click multiple items in the timeline, you can move the timeline, move them. So if you want them to start earlier, say at one second, instead of at four or five seconds, you simply command or control click the ones you want to move and move them within the timeline. Likewise, if you wanted to change their duration, command click so that you have the ending points and then just stretch it out. And there you have it, Bulk Operations in Toonly. Thanks for watching. In this video, we're going to go over the new lip sync feature in Toonly. So let's get started. You'll see here that I already have a classroom scene set up and I have a teacher who walks on and waves to the students. Now, wouldn't it be nice if she spoke directly to the students? Well, now with this new lip sync feature, she can do just that. And here's how. First, you're going to want to start with the plus sign by the character to add a new animation. In this case, we're going to scroll down the list until we find lip sync. There it is. And you'll see it's prompting us to add an audio track. Right now it's set to none. And right now I can't select any audio track at all. And that's because if you look down here in the timeline, there's no audio to choose from. So we need to add it. And there's two ways you can do that. I'm going to show you both ways. The first way is if you go here to your audios tab, click upload new sound, and you're just going to add your pre-recorded audio. In this case, I recorded this a little earlier today. And boom, I've added it to Toonly. And now what I want to do is click on it and drag and drop it into my timeline. It's important to add it to the narration portion of the audio timeline rather than the music. And then what you want to do is drag it into position. So you'll see my lip sync is right here, so I want it to start here. Obviously this needs to be longer. So we're getting close here. A few little housekeeping things to do before we hit the play button. The first one would be right clicking into lip sync and choosing the track that we just added. So now you can see I have a track to add. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then the next thing that you might want to do is decide, okay, is this voiceover going to go with this scene only, or is it going to carry across all of my scenes? In this case, I'd like it to go only for this scene. So I'm going to right click into my timeline and I'm going to remove the playthrough option. So now it's only for this scene. Click save. Then next, I want to kind of clean this up right here. This is all dead air because I didn't click my record stop button in time. So we don't want dead air. So we're just going to go ahead and just drag it to the end here to clean that up. We could do the same at the beginning. So it's nice and clean. And it should be ready to go. So let's go ahead and take a listen. Welcome to class. Please take your seats and we'll get started in a few minutes. And boom, there you go. Now the second option is very easy as well. So let's go ahead and remove this one. You just right click into it and click the remove button. And what we would like to do is do a recording on the fly. So you're gonna position your playhead where the lip sync will begin, so right here at the beginning, and you're going to go down here to the microphone and click the record tab, and once you do it, then you're going to say what you want the character to say. So I'll do that in just one second. There's my countdown. Welcome to class. Please take your seats and we'll get started in a few minutes. Okay, so I have added it and 
It looks quite similar to what I had earlier. Again, we're going to want to decide if it's going to play through or not. And if you want to just kind of clean that up a bit. Likewise, I think I was a little slow on the uptake here. And so now I'll probably move this over to about there. Lengthen that a little bit. So we go into here, we're going to right click on Lip Sync, Track, Select, and we're going to choose VoiceOver and Save. Now if we take a listen, her lips should move. Welcome to class. Please take your seats and we'll get started in a few minutes. And there you have it, how to use the new Lip Sync feature in Toonly. Thanks for watching. Thank you.